Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm CK from Hymes Technologies. I'm glad to have this opportunity to introduce Hymes WE1 solution. Uh, I'm along with my two colleagues, uh, Big Chen, our embedded system lead, and uh, Dennis Tang, our deep learning lead. Uh, they are major members in this project. And uh, in the session today, we will also introduce a uh, object detection model uh, for W1 Plus from uh, training the model and the deployment to the target. Uh, here I introduce uh, our W1 Plus uh, chip. Uh, W1 Plus is a ultra low power MCU. Uh, we are talking, focus on uh, tiny machine learning application. Uh, it is embedded uh, Arc EM90 DSP. Uh, it can run up to 400 megahertz. It's very fast in MCU category. And uh, with the DSP instruction, uh, Sports CMD and the AGU address generated unit is very useful for uh, tiny machine learning inference. And uh, we also have XY memory. Uh, it's a multi-bank memory architecture. Uh, we can arrange uh, the convolution data in different memory bank. So we can fetch the data in one cycle when doing convolution. And uh, we are aiming for uh, image application. So we have image accelerator in our chip. And uh, some of them even can run without DSP. When the DSP is powered off, some image accelerators still working. Uh, they are motion detection, two by two filter and the five by five filter and the JPEG codec. These three modules can work even when DSP is powered off. Uh, two by two filter is a uh, uh, scale in down filter. Sometimes we don't need the full image for image processing. And the uh, five by five filter is uh, the mosaic filter. So we can support a uh, color uh, image sensor and convert the bare pattern to uh, RGB and the YUV format. And the JPEG uh, codec, we can compress the input image uh, to store in the system memory. And we can store in a RIM buffer format. Uh, it depends on how much memory available for JPEG. For example, if we can uh, save 10 JPEG frames, and uh, we may configure the frame rate about uh, two frames per second. That means we can uh, keep the latest five second image in our system memory. And uh, once the DSP wake up, we can um, process uh, our previous five, se five second uh, image. It's a, a unique feature in our chip. And uh, we also have motion detection engine in our image accelerator. That means we can detect, uh, is there any motion happened in uh, low power mode? And uh, we can wake up uh, our DSP to do a uh, computer vision uh, exam. Is there any interested object in, in the scene? And also we have HOG expression. Uh, HOG is histogram oriented gradient. Uh, it's a uh, common use in the computer region feature. We have this module to upload our DSP loading. And uh, we also have a uh, resample module. It's a uh, scaled down engine, some uh, ratio. And uh, it's useful for the pyramid uh, operation in the computer region algorithm pipe. And the uh, uh, our target is ultra low power application, so we have a uh, multi layer power, power management features. Just as I just mentioned, uh, some of the block can work without DSP. So, we, our power management module will uh, enable the circuit when needed. Power supply can be uh, reduced to a uh, very low level. And uh, we have a uh, large internal memory. Totally, we have two megabyte SRAM. There are uh, 320 kilobyte programming memory and uh, 320 
kilobytes the data memory. And then these two memory are uh, CPU local memory. That means we can uh, you store the code and data uh, in fast memory. So it also a reason we can have efficient machinery inference. And then we have 1.4 megabyte system memory. Uh, the large memory makes the uh, image processing more practical. So we can store up to VGA uh, resolution uh, image in our SRAM. And then in IoT application, uh, security is important. So we also have a power security engine. We can uh, support security boot and uh, uh, protect the firmware and the algorithm being stolen, being tamped. And we have a uh, rich uh, peripheral. We can connect to a CMOS image sensor for image application. And uh, we have a P PDM interface. We can connect to PDM microphone. And uh, we can do some audio application and the I2S interface to connect to a speaker. And there are other common peripherals. Here I show an example for our ultra low power tiny machine learning inference. Uh, we use uh, one frame per second uh, tensor flow line micro uh, person detection as an example. The person detection uh, neural network model, the input image size is 96 by 96, and the uh, weight size is 250 kilobytes. And each inference, it has uh, 60 million ops. And we make the use case is uh, one frame per second. It will periodical wake up and the do a uh, person detection inference. And we measure the W1 average power include uh, our camera. It, it is 2.2 uh, million watt if we using high efficient uh, on both DC to DC converter. Or we can save a uh, external component. We use uh, W1 internal LDO. The power is 3.7 milliwatt. And you can see the waveform. Our uh, idea is to keep the system in standby mode as long as possible. And uh, power on the DSP to do the uh, tiny machine learning quickly and uh, get back to standby again. The use case is for one frame per second, and uh, you can use our chip to do uh, more use case. For example, you can uh, uh, company a, a motion sensor, is, uh, for example, PIR sensor. Once PIR sensor get uh, uh, sensing, and uh, you will wake up the WE1 to do uh, computer vision to check is any interesting object in the scene. So it will stay uh, most of the time in the low power mall and wake up only a few times a day. And also uh, we can make other use case. For example, use the motion detection inside uh, W1 chip and uh, you can save an external uh, motion sensor and uh, you will wake up the, the DSP when the motion detected. Uh, here I show uh, our internal use system ball because our application is focused on ultra low power. So the ball, we have a HMS AOS camera and the W1 plus uh, low power MCU. And uh, we will have many uh, power measurement point. We can measure the core power, IO power, and the analog power, even the uh, camera power. So when we create a, a use case, uh, every time we will check it, if the core power, IO power, and analog power to already meet our expectation and uh, make sure everything uh, is under power optimization. And uh, we can estimate our better life for application. Sometimes we want to make a, a battery powered uh, doorbell. Sometimes we want to 
make a battery power um, intrusion detection. So the battery power is always our major concern. And uh, because we support the TensorFlow Live Micro for the uh, machine learning inference, and uh, we want to uh, make a development ball for the developer to easily to use, to develop their idea, their, their model, and they can use uh, W1 Plus as a platform. So we made a, we, we make a very small boat and try to put anything, everything needed in this small boat. Then the user can use it uh, to develop it. Uh, of course, it has our uh, W1 Plus MCU. And the, on the boat, we have a high mass HN360 AOS VGA camera. And uh, we have uh, FTDI USB to SPI I2C UR bridge. So user can use a USB cable to communicate with the boat, only one interface needed. And uh, we have uh, accelerometer and the uh, reset button, and uh, we have two microphones. It's, it's PDA microphone and the LED. And we, if we need to connect to other device, uh, we have expansion header for I2C and GPIO. And uh, we already uh, support the TensorFlow Live Micro uh, example, uh, Hello World, the basic one. And uh, for vision application, we support person detection. And uh, we also support the micro speech and voice application. And the match one, the vibration application. And we create a GitHub to come put everything together, our SDK and the TensorFlow Micro framework and the, all the example code together in the GitHub. So uh, you developer can access uh, everything through uh, our GitHub. And we also partner with uh, Edge Impulse and uh, make the ML development platform support W1 Plus. And the, the development platform is very uh, fancy. Uh, it's, it can use our Edge device to collect valuable data and uh, send to the cloud. And uh, in the cloud service, uh, we can train in the algorithm. And also there are a lot of toolkit available to enrich the data and the augmentation and the, some pre-processing toolkit and the user can use it very easily to develop in their uh, machine learning algorithm and also can do the validation and test even uh, can deploy to the our target build the that, uh, final firmware call and uh, deploy to edge device and do some testing. And everything is visualized uh, for data analysis and uh, the, uh, the parameter adjustment. So it's very useful for the ML developer. And then the EVV is already on sale on the spot farm. So if you interested, you can try to get one and uh, play the tiny machine learning with our developing board. And uh, we also make our IC available on DigiKey because uh, we have been asked the user want to develop their own uh, system. So you can get some sample and make their own board they can connect to their uh, requirement to the um, PR sensor or other wireless uh, component for the for the real system. And we are already support the uh, TensorFlow micro example, but uh, uh, we always be asked one question for a while. Can we do object detection on W1 plus? Uh, because uh, the, the user always asks, uh, object detection can do uh, more application for image 
then image color separation. For example, we can do object counting and uh, maybe can uh, estimate the distance uh, based on the bounding bus. And uh, we can uh, know the location of the objects. And uh, the developer always say that uh, it's not an easy task to create an object detection model on W1 plus because the resource constraint uh, the response function uh, include the computation capability and the, the memory size. So we decide to provide one more example. Uh, it's object detection example for W1 plus. And uh, our target is, is a complete example uh, for the deep learning model topology itself and uh, the data set and the, the training environment and uh, how to evaluate the performance and uh, to uh, deploy to the target. Everything is complete and uh, all of them should be open source because uh, the developer want to leverage that and to modify and uh, make their own uh, application. So today uh, we will introduce uh, the example we provided. Uh, the more detail flow, we use uh, Yolo Festis as the model. Uh, Yolo Festis, Festis is a model developed by a developer from China. Uh, why we use that? Because it already very compact. So it, it may be possible to deploy to W1 plus. And uh, we use MS Code Code data set. This data set is used very, very uh, frequently in object detection, image segmentation, and uh, key point detection application. And the uh, training framework is .NET. And we will also provide the annotation file from MS Code Code to .NET uh, for training set and validation set everything we will provide it. And every, after training the model, uh, we will provide how to evaluation the performance for floating point level. And because we support uh, TensorFlow Live Micro to, as the framework for inference, so we will need a converter tool to convert a .NET model to TensorFlow. And then we will use TensorFlow Lite Converter to do the quantization and the post-train uh, quantization to the int8 data format. And we will also provide the evaluation for int8 uh, data type because we want to make sure there is no much uh, performance drop from floating point to int8. Then we will have the TF Lite file for uh, ready for deployment. So we will also provide a W1 plus a project file workspace that can import the TF light and uh, deploy into the target and the, the project can access the camera uh, device and uh, also can uh, send the detection result to the PC tool. And uh, we will also provide a PC tool that can connect to the, our development board. So everything will be complete. Uh, because we leverage uh, the resource from the open developer so, and uh, we will already collect all the requirements on HIMES GitHub. So you want to reproduce the model training, you just uh, clone the training platform repository from our uh, GitHub and uh, everything will be there include the .NET environment and the, the TensorFlow model converter tool and the, the related uh, documentation. And we do some model adjustment of YOLO FASTIS to fit our uh, W1 uh, platform because it's resource constrained. And first we make it one class problem and we use person, for example. Uh, the original model is, is for 80 classes uh, problem, but uh, 
uh, in the reality, your problem may not so complex. So we use only one class. And we uh, reduce the input size to 160 by 160 because the uh, memory size is uh, limited. And uh, we all only use um, one channel image, mono image, because on the uh, EVV board, it's a monocon camera. So we made the, some adjustment for this model. And the, the evaluation, uh, we provide the script to do the evaluation after training the model. And at a floating point, uh, the AP50 score is 35.3%. And uh, the parameter size is 0 0.29 million. So I, we, the size is, uh, can fit to our uh, EVV. And uh, after quantization to int8, uh, the AP50 score is 34.8%. You can see uh, the from 14 point to uh, int8 uh, data type, the performance drop is very small. So we think uh, uh, it's okay to deploy to our target. And till now, uh, everything is open source and uh, we already can create it, the TF light for our target. Uh, but uh, to make tiny ML better performance, uh, uh, we should train the model only using the information that is relevant to solve, solving the problem. Uh, we use the Hamas uh, EVV. So the image quality, the resolution, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the fear, we want to resolve the problem, may not uh, as the MS Coco data set. So we will try to create a customized uh, data set uh, in the training. So in our side, we also use our Hermes camera in Hermes office we take uh, thousands of images and uh, we label the ground truth uh, data and uh, we use the, the above uh, training flow to do the training again and we can see the AP score can up to 90%. And now we have uh, two model. One is trained with uh, MS Coco data set one is trained with uh, HIMES, uh custom data set. And then we will provide a project that can input, import the TF Lite file and uh, uh, compile the code, deploy it to the target, and uh, run the result and the display to our PC tool. So user can use our GitHub to clone this example and uh, have trial on uh, their field. So today later, we will go uh, demo in, in our site and uh, to check the performance. Hi everyone, I'm Big Cat. Uh, nice to meet you and uh, before the demo, Please let me introduce a little bit more about TF Lite for microcontroller flow. Uh, this is the inference flow. As you can see, uh, this flow separate can be separate into two parts. First, left part, uh, we can say that it is a setup part. And the right part, it is the invoke part. Uh, in the setup part, you can see three blocks. First one, uh, Tensor Arena block. It allocate uh, memory for inference use. The second block, uh, load model block. It will get the model address for later inference use. And the third block, uh, load operator. It will load operator functions for uh, the graph use. After the setup plot, uh, we will go to the invoke part. It will loopily uh, get image from sensor and run the graph. 
and then get the graph result and then do the gamage again. So as we can see, uh, there are two blocks that relate to the mem uh, memory usage, the tensor arena part and the graph part. Uh, for our use, uh, most of the case, these two blocks will be located in the system memory. In WE1, uh, there are two megabyte of system memory for use. But still, there might be some case uh, use larger memory. So we can change the model from system memory to flash. In this way, uh, we can get uh, more test case for use. Uh, for W1 plus, we got two megabytes of fresh for use. So uh, in the following YOLO example, we will <clears throat> uh, use this case as an example. So uh, during the example, first, we need to clone the YOLO example. So please find a uh, high mass GitHub. And you can find the user example here. And uh, there are YOLO fetish person detection example inside here. So we will clone this repository. So it might take uh, some time for you to download the repository. So in this example, first, we need to download the third party library. So we can just uh, type the command. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see in the camera, <clears throat> this is a W1 uh, EVB we are going to demo. So after download the subparty library, uh, we will modify two parts uh, to use high mass data set. First one in the make file, you can see uh, to use the high mass data set, uh, we need to comment here. And another one is in the main function. We come on this part because uh, in the YOLO example, uh, the anchor will be different if you use different data sets. So after these two parts, we can now view our EOL file. There are also some detail you can find in the example readme. So if they, you have some question about uh, building this example, you can just check this readme file. And it takes uh, a little time to uh, make the year.
Uh, there is also a PC tool you may need to download for uh, receiving the image and the uh, yellow result. So you can find in the readme. <clears throat> here is the download link. You can download from here. Okay, so after build uh, the EOS image, we now try to build fresh image that we need to download to W1EVB. So we now got our fresh image here. So we will now use uh, UR to download. So there are some uh, download detail if you want to download, upload the fresh image. Also, you can find that in the readme. So now it will start to upload the fresh image, the yellow image to our ball. And uh, maybe we can talk a little bit more about the PC tool. Uh, as you can see in the readme, after you download it, uh, it, it need uh, the execute uh, property. So, You can change the property here. Uh, the permission, please allow the execute uh, permission here. Or you can use uh, command line, change more, plus X for PC tool. You can also give the SQ permission to PC tool. And uh, for the PC tool, you can see there will be a receive button for receive image and the metadata result. And uh, it, there is also a checkbox for save data. So in your case, if you change the model for your own project, there might be some metadata you want to do some for extra experiment. You can check this safe data and then you can get the data from W1. After upload the fresh image, please wait a little bit. And uh, after you see the burn application down message, and then you can try the reset button. So now our WE1 is uh, inside our W1 is a uh, Euro example. So we can use the PC tool to receive it result. So maybe we can try from here.
And in the rectangle, it shows that there are person detected. And also we can change uh, to other camera angle. It is all real time done by W1 EVB. And that, this is an object uh, detection model we recently uh, created and uh, uploaded to our GitHub. And uh, the developer can use that for training other objects like a uh, presentation or other objects. Okay, so uh, this is demo about your law example. Uh, please let me uh, introduce you about some more detail about PC tool. As you can see in the HIMAX GitHub, there is a SPI tool directory. So, in the uh, it contains the source code for SPI tool. You can modify the source code to uh, to your own environment. And uh, uh, the inside the SPI tool, if you got the image, send it from WU one. You will get the image. And uh, if you got some metadata output from WU1, you also get the metadata. And uh, for uh, WU1, inside the call, you can use uh, SPI M initial to initial the uh, translation, and then use SPI send API. This can send uh, JPEG information or some metadata information for your use case. And another thing is in the SDK directory, you can find the Flash API. Uh, this is the API that uh, we say that if you want to put your own TF light in the Flash, you can uh, check this part. There are two APIs included for usage. Normally, uh, as we say that, like Google pers uh, person detection, uh, magic wand, this kind of uh, example, all model and the tensor arena are located in the system memory. So you will see in the example, there are uh, model data, CC file and the header file. This makes the model in the system memory. So for this YOLO test case, we want to uh, pull the 
model data out and uh, put it to the fresh. So follow the description. You can use uh, the fresh initial command for in your setup call. This will open the fresh area. And then in the TF like get model, you can put a fresh get model address API that will retrieve fresh uh, model address for get model. In this case, you can use your TF light in fresh image. And there's one more thing you need to do is in the image gen, there is a parameter for TF light file. You need to use uh, this parameter and uh, uh, put your TF light file in the fresh. So all you can do is follow these steps and then you can put them in the fresh. So uh, this is uh, almost the uh, demo part. Uh, maybe we can go to the QA section. Um, I see a question about that uh, uh, somebody is asking uh, what is the inference time on the boat for percent object detection model. Uh, I remember the, the about three frames per second. Three to four. Three. So it's about. 300 milliseconds, I guess, I think. Maybe we can check a, a more detailed data for you. And there uh, we see a, a question about uh, how crowded uh, human press and uh, how precise uh, it can detect objects. Hi. Right. Uh, it's a good question, and um, basically we 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 use the uh, Euro model. So you can imagine that we we split the image into the uh, five by uh, uh, five by five grid and ten by ten grid. We we have two Euro layer, and one for each is uh, the first one is five by five grid, and the next one and the second one is uh, ten by ten grid. And you can imagine that uh, the 10 by 10 grid is detection is, is meant for detect the dense object. So, so the, the, the minimal distance, you can imagine that the, uh, the, the 10 by 10 grid, uh, for example, 10 by 10 is almost 16 by 16 pixels is that you, you can identify the di different object, but, but it's just the algorithm. So, it, uh, uh, for example, you 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 can consider your FOV, the field of angle. It, you 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 should you you should almost uh, you should also consider your uh, FOV and the, the grid size, and and you can calculate the the approximately the uh, minimal distance you can identify. Yeah. Yeah. So. And and we see another question about how to leverage the DSP function on the chip to accelerate uh, your own model. Okay. Uh, it is not described uh, in today's presentation. Uh, so I uh, uh, explain here. Uh, we support and pencil. Light micro inference uh, engine, and uh, we already optimized the inference uh, code. So, if you train your one model and uh, deploy to the target as uh, BK just introduced, 
it will connect to the uh, MRI function, machine learning interface that's provided by uh, Synapsis. And uh, we already work with Synapsis and uh, integrate with uh, TensorFlow Line Micro code. So if you run with the TensorFlow Line Micro, you will leverage the DSP capability already. And I remember we optimize the convolution, stepwise convolution, uh, fully connected there uh, because uh, they are the most used in the tiny machine learning model. So just use the TensorFlow Live Micro and uh, you will leverage the DSP functionality. Okay, let, you, let, let me check if there are any questions. So we well, uh, detect object in the dark. Uh, I think uh, maybe we can give that a try, but uh, I think <laughs> dark. So, Maybe we can try to detect something in the dark. Uh, ten of uh, ten of sunlight in our room. Um, this model is trained uh, with a high mass uh, custom data set. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I think everyone can uh, use that in your field for a trial. But uh, I think uh, maybe you, to get better performance, maybe in uh, your, your uh, scenario, you should uh, enhance your, the data set to fit your condition. In our side, we uh, try using MS Coco data set and uh, also use a uh, high custom data set. Uh, I think uh, uh, both, uh, both model can uh, do well in our environment, but uh, the better one is to have the data set to uh, fit your uh, environment. That, that will be better.
Let me check, is there any more question? Is there a way to provide a model on the target? Uh, the providing, uh, uh, there are uh, tick account, get the tick account function on the target and do, uh, in our example, do we, do we show the, how to get to the tick account? Uh, maybe we can show our header file. Yeah. Uh, we, we have the count function for yes. uh, providing the uh, inference time. Uh, this is a W1SDK uh, library directory. So you can see the header file here. And uh, for For filing, you can use two functions. First one, you use the tick start. It will start to count the tick. And then every time you get use tick get function, you can get current tick for use. And you can also see the example usage here for your own. And uh, there's another question where to, uh, to find more detailed documentation. Uh, right now, we only provide uh, for the public about the, the documentation for public is the, uh, the stuff we uh, release on our GitHub. Okay, and uh, if we, you want to get more detailed uh, information, uh, that will be uh, private contact our uh, uh sales or pm channel to get that Will the resolution work at any image sensor? Will, uh, will the solution work with any other image sensor? Uh, our uh, W1 Plus uh, can work any image sensor that with a uh, parallel interface. Or do you uh, ask about uh, the model itself can work with other image sensor, I think it, it will be okay. Uh, do any optimization for the microcontroller? Okay, uh, for we, the only uh, optimization is to leverage the Arc EM90 DSP. Uh, we only use the uh, optimization code for the some OP of TF Light Micro. Others uh, are still using uh, reference kernel from Tensor for microcontroller. Okay, so I think uh, uh, we already uh, got our time times up. So if uh, you have further questions, please, please contact Hamas. Thank you. Thank you.
Awesome job. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your help. Yeah, um, I think we're all good. We, I think we can just end the Zoom. Um, I'm not sure how to end the live, but thank you guys so much and um, enjoy the rest of the conference if you attend any more sessions. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.